Hi, I'm Chantel Rohr, and I am currently at New Hope Church in Puyallup, Washington. I have been married for over nine years, and I have three gorgeous little boys that are four years and under. My degree is in elementary education, but I have served in kids' ministry for 20 years in some form, whether it's been a volunteer, an interim children's pastor, or a lead children's pastor. One of my biggest passions is teaching and equipping leaders, which is all of you, to engage and teach kids about Christ, which is why I'm so excited today to have the opportunity to help you understand key stages of early childhood development. Early childhood is a huge range of kids from ages infant to five or six years old. And they change so much in that first five or six years of their life. But there's three things that you need to know no matter what age you teach. The first is this. Early childhood age have a very short attention span, which means everything you teach has to be quick and precise. Now, depending on the kid's age and how much you have them involved will lengthen the amount of time they can handle being taught to. But keep in mind that a five and six-year-old can only handle 10 to 15 minutes at a time. And if it's a toddler, two to five minutes max per each activity. The second is this, communication is key. Are you using the right words and are you asking the right questions for the right age group that you're speaking to? I'll demonstrate this later as we go through the workshop. The third is this, that these kids, their brains are still developing and they don't fully understand. So in order to understand, they have to see and they have to be able to experience, which means you have to have visual aids and you have to involve them in play or discovery so they can experience what you're trying to teach. So today we're going to take a quick snapshot of Jesus' birth in three different age groups. And we're going to use these to help show you different key stages and how to communicate with those different ages. So first we're going to start with the nursery age. So this is your toddlers. Now keep in mind, toddlers, they're just starting to walk. They're just starting to use words and language. So they usually use things like one word to answer questions, or they like to point at things and like, what's that? What's that? Okay, so they're just in that stage of learning. So when you are talking to them, keep that in mind using words they understand like cow, right? Or things that they can do, like, what does a sheep say? Bah! Use that kind of language when you talk to these toddlers, and expect them to answer, bah! Or cow. Don't expect them to be like, well, that's a cow, and it belongs in a farm, right? Make sure that you're asking the right questions for this crew, okay? So if I were to teach the story of Jesus, I would have my toddlers sitting around, a table close to me because they need to be close so that they can pay attention and focus on what you're doing. And I'd bring out, oh, look at this. Look at this stable. Oh, my goodness. See all the animals? <gasps> can any of you find the cow? Now, the thing about this age is, again, they like to point. If you ask questions like that, even if they don't know how to talk, most of them know what a cow is, and they can point to that. So using that kind of language where they can engage in this story. Now, they also, at this age, love to have their hands on things and like put things in their mouth because they learn through their senses. So this is a great opportunity for you to allow them to play with these things and say, who'd like the horsey? What's the horsey say? Nay, and give them a horse to hold on to. And you can pass all the animals out to the kids as you tell this story and talk about Jesus. And oh, God sent baby Jesus. And you take the Jesus and you'd let them touch the Jesus. So you'd go around your table and again, they like to learn from their senses. So you're letting them touch baby Jesus. And again, with this, you're not going to go into the full story because, again, they do not understand the story. But they do know babies. And they do understand love in some way because their mommy and daddy loves them. And you can talk about how God loves us so much that he sent baby Jesus. And Jesus is a special baby. That's pretty much the gist of what you do with your story for a toddler. Now we're going to move to the preschool age, which is three to four-year-olds. These kids are a little more capable of having conversations. So your language that you use can be a little deeper. Your questions can be more than just one answer questions. And you could use something like this for them as well. 
But they also like to start to engage in the story and pretend. They're starting to get into pretending. Now, they do not understand what's real and what's not yet. So those are things to keep in your mind when you're talking to these kids. They do not understand those things. But they love to engage and pretend. So one example of something you could use are popsicle puppets. Okay, so we have the manger scene here. We have our kings. We have our sheep. And we have our cows for the manger. We have baby Jesus, right? And they also love to sing. So one thing I would recommend is when you're teaching the story of Jesus, do a song they all know, which is happy birthday. They're all really into their birthdays. They're really into who they are. It's all about me, mine. They're not so good at sharing, so be aware of that. But you can have different roles for each kid to play. And you can talk about, you know, we are going to learn about a very, very special baby today. Does anybody remember whose birthday we celebrate for Christmas? It's a bigger question, but they can still give you an answer. And most of them would probably know if they've grown up in church. That's baby Jesus' birthday coming for, for Christmas time. So you can have someone hold a baby Jesus and get them involved by saying, oh, what does a baby sound like? And have the kids, so you're reaching different learners, cry, blah, blah, whatever it is. And then pass them out. Oh, who'd like to be a sheep? Who can make the sheep sound? Ah, oh, good job. Now, who, who does the sheep follow? Would be a question that a toddler would not be able to answer. But you might be able to get the kids to answer, oh, the sheep follows a shepherd. Oh, okay. So when it's time for the shepherd part in the story, I need you sheep to follow the shepherd. That's practice. And you have them actually practice. But you're getting them involved in a way that they can handle, because they can handle doing this and not eating the paper. Whereas a toddler, if you gave this to them, all they'd want to do is put it in their mouth, right? So you pass out these pieces, and you talk about how an angel came to Mary. An angel came to Mary and told Mary that baby Jesus was coming, and how she rode on a donkey. And so you pull out your donkey, and you let the kids pretend to be Mary riding on a donkey into Bethlehem. So with preschoolers, you can go into more detail, but they still need to see the visual of whatever you're using. And you can talk about the kings and, and gifts and how many of those kids like getting gifts for Christmas. Oh, but they gave gifts to Jesus because he was special and he was a king. So you can talk more about those things but and ask um, bigger questions for them because they can understand a little bit more. And a fun activity to do with them as well is have them follow the leader, but have the leader wear a star on his head or her head and actually march around because, again, they're more capable of getting a movement in their body and hopping and jumping and skipping and, and tiptoeing. So you can do all these things in a preschool room that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do with your toddlers or your babies. So those are some key parts about a preschooler, and they're able to follow instructions better too, which is why follow the leader would work, because you would say follow the leader, watch the leader, and see what they do. Okay. So this is what you could do for your preschool age kids. The final one we're going to go into is your pre-K kids. These kids are very good at communicating with each other. They can talk to each other, no problem. They can answer questions, no problem. They have a larger vocabulary to answer more deeper questions. And they also love role play. So this five, six-year-old age is the perfect time to actually have them help with role play and retell the story. They love to retell stories. So one way I would teach them is I would sit them down and I would actually have them color these pictures ahead of time. It's when they came in the class, when you have that spare time before everybody shows up, hey, would a couple of you be willing to color these for me? That gives them purpose, right? And it makes them feel proud of their role that they're going to play. And so once they color them, you can, you can collect them, and then you could look at the pictures together in order. So we're going to tell the story first, and then we're going to role play to retell the story. So you would read it, Mary's good news. God sent an angel, and the angel told Mary that she would have a son. His name would be 
and even pause there and let the kids answer, Jesus, and he will be great. And so you go through the whole story page by page and you talk about what's going on in the stories and you can ask them to talk about the pictures because they love to be involved and those kind of things. So once you get through the pictures in the story, you can start to have the kids be involved. Remember, they are really into that role play and if they understand things, they really get into it. So if you say, oh, who has a baby brother or sister at home? And then you could call on a kid and they could talk about, oh, with the baby, you could be really gentle with the baby. You're making a connection to real life and that helps them learn and, and engage and be a part of the story. So then you can hand that baby off to them and say, oh, can you hold this baby? This is going to be baby Jesus. So I need someone to be married too. So you probably want the girl that's going to hold the baby to be Mary, right? And she can love on baby Jesus and um, be a part of that. And then you're going to find an angel, right? And you can put wings on the angel or you can put a robe around the angel, but you're giving them props and allowing them to fall into these roles. And so you have the angel come to Mary and say, you're going to have a son and his name's going to be Jesus. And of course, you're going to lead them through this. You'll say, okay, copy after me you're going to have a son. And the angel will say, you're going to have a son. And they can sing it in a funny voice or whatever you want to do to make them engage in that fun um, atmosphere. And then you could have Mary and Joseph and you can have someone be a donkey and you can have different animals that they can wear masks and be those things and you say, oh, who can make a good nay sound or hee-haw, hee-haw, whatever it is. And you can have those kids practice and you you pass out all the different parts that they can play so they can get into their characters. And then you have kings and you make crowns for them and you let them put the crowns on and sing, I come bringing gifts, right, to the kids and help them through this. But you give all these pieces out and then you walk through the story one more time and you have, while you're holding the sign, you say, hey, Mary, hey, come up here, Mary and the angel, and then you have them act it out. And you go to the next page. And this really allows them to be a part and to engage and to, and to um, have a memory that they can go home and go, oh, you won't believe, Mama, Dad, I was a king. And I got to bring a gift to baby Jesus or whatever it was. They will talk more about it with their parents, which will also make it stick. Because when we talk and we, we reflect on what we've learned, um, it sticks to us more. So no matter what you do in whatever age group, make sure that you're involving the kids in ways that they can communicate and they can learn. And that's through using props so they have a visual or they can engage and experience. That's using language that they can understand and questions that they can answer and feel successful in doing. And make, making sure it's short. You don't have to prolong a story for kids to understand it. You just have to make it short and precise so that they know at the end of the day that Jesus was sent to earth to save us and that he loves us. And you can do that in a lot of ways and forms. But be aware of those things as you teach. And not only as you teach the story, but as you do activities as well. Be aware, toddlers are probably not supposed to have scissors, right? But a, a pre-K kid could use scissors. Uh, toddlers would use more stickers. So whatever you choose to do with your kids, make sure that those key stages are fitting for what you're trying to teach so that you feel successful and that the kids feel successful and can learn. Thank <laughs> you.